With the recent announcement of NVIDIA's special GeForce broadcast, it makes sense that we can start to expect leaks of the upcoming next generation GPUs, and some partners may have just done that. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Just as NVIDIA made an announcement of an announcement pertaining to their upcoming special GeForce broadcast event, the leaks and rumors pertaining to their next generation GPUs have started to ramp up. I recently talked about that in my last video, sharing some leaked photos, online listings, and more. It looks like now a couple of AIBs have leaked more info and images, which basically means that the launch is imminent. Harukaze, who's a well-known hardware leaker on Twitter, posted various 4090 SKUs that were spotted at the Eurasian Economic Commission. These models were from Gigabyte, and you'll often see companies file these models as they're near launch. We've seen stuff from ASRock, ASUS. Here we can see that there are a total of 11 different 4090 SKUs. Sometimes not all of the SKUs will actually see the light of day, but it's still kind of mind-boggling to see 11 different SKUs for a single GPU. And the thing is, all of these cards will end up performing within margin of each other. So what you're really paying for is the difference between cooling performance, the quality of the cooler, RGB, etc. and more. Sure, some of the higher-end models will have some extreme cooling solutions, or they might be water-cooled, which will help with overclocking, but the difference between the highest end and the lowest tier can sometimes amount to like $200 to $400, maybe even more, and at that point, I just say it's not worth it. I personally don't get why we have to have so many different models based on the same GPU. There's probably a logistical or marketing reason behind it, but honestly, there should only be like three or four different models at most. I remember when I was working at Canada Computers and would take in shipments of Gigabyte GPUs, it was honestly sh such a shit show because you'd have like all these different SKUs, you'd have to attach different uh, prices to them and then bin each and every one accordingly. It was such a nuisance but I digress. What I wanted to point out before I went on my tangent there was that some of these models listed here do match with those listings we saw from the Australian retailers who apparently had put up the cards for pre-order, so that's a good sign I guess. Moving on, and we have some leaked images posted over at Video Cards who are sourcing the Baidu forums. The original post got deleted, so we'll take a look at the pictures they posted on their site. These are pictures of what appear to be a Zotac RTX 4090. It appears these pictures came from a factory because there appears to be flat boxes, some heat shrink, like as if they were getting ready to package up the cards. Looking at the card, I mean all I can see from this small render is that I guess it looks alright, it has a curvy shroud. What's interesting to me, however, is that the font on the bottom left where it says 4090 has that same font style that we saw from what was allegedly a leaked picture of the RTX 4080, which means it probably wasn't a fake. Not really sure why Nvidia decided to change the font, I mean, I don't really have any comment or complaint about it, it's just a font. However, the second pick is what gives us a better look and we can see multiple GPUs here from what I'm assuming are in their final packaging stage. And I don't know why, but <laughs> as soon as I saw the picture, immediately what I thought of was those super fancy concepts of cars from the 90s or it kind of looks like a Covenant carrier ship from Halo. But this card looks absolutely massive. It's probably pushing at least three and a half, maybe even four slots. But that's probably to compensate for the higher TDP. This model apparently has a TDP of 450 watts, which is on the lower end than I was expecting. But hey, I, again, I have no complaints. The lower the power number, the better. Next up, I wanted to discuss an article that was posted earlier today at WCCF Tech, which talks about the release dates for the RTX 4000 series. They're sourcing a poster from Chipel who claims that the RTX 4090 will come out first in October, followed by the 4080 in November, the 4070 in December, and then the 4060 at CES in January. It's interesting that this time around, Nvidia is launching the top tier Halo product first before all the other models. Typically, we'd see the X80 class GPU come out first, or the X80 or X70 class cards come out together, but I feel like they have a good reason to do this, and that's because they want to give some time for the series to coexist together. And I did talk about this a little bit in my last video, where if Nvidia decide to release an RTX 4070 next month for like $500 or $600, nobody will be buying any of the current gen cards. However, say they release an RTX 4090 for 
$2,000, which is a price point that's out of reach for the vast majority of PC gamers, then you might have some people going, well, it'll be a few months until the 4070 is released, and right now I can find a really good deal for a 3070 at a low price. I feel like I'm just going to go for that. This is just total speculation on my part. And the other thing I was thinking about was that perhaps they might be letting volume accumulate, as I did hear that Nvidia was having some supply issues, and they probably don't want to release models that are targeted towards a wider audience, only for them to have very little stock on launch. That whole situation we had last time was just terrible. <laughs> On a side note, WCCF Tech are claiming that their sources have, have mentioned there will be two different RTX 4080 models. One with 16GB of G6X memory with a TDP of 340 watts, and another with 12GB of G6X memory and a TDP of 285 watts. We know that adding more memory chips will increase TBP, but it doesn't warrant a 55 watt difference. I think the model that has lower memory may be further cut down, and if that's the case, I don't really like that. I would have much rather preferred it if they had just called the higher end one a 4080 Ti and the other one a 4080. It just makes a lot more sense and just avoids all that confusion. When you have two different GPUs named after the same model, it makes it really confusing for everyone, reviewers, retailers, and consumers. This wouldn't be too far-fetched though, I mean, we already have two different RTX 3080 models right now. One with 10 gigabytes, which was originally released in 2020, and then we had one that has 12 gigabytes that came out, I think it was earlier this year, and it did have a bump up in CUDA cores. Suffice it to say, both 4080s will be offering a huge performance jump over the RTX 3080, I don't doubt that. And since we are dealing with two different models, there's going to be two different price points. Where the 4080 12GB might be priced at like $699, and the 16GB 4080 might be sold for $899. Or if Nvidia decides to increase pricing, then I assume it might be $100 more. So $799 for the 12GB model, and $999 for the 16GB model. It's going to be very interesting to see how that will play out. If the 12GB model performs closely to the 16GB model, then that's the GPU everyone's going to flock towards. But, you know, if it's cut down, we'll just have to see how much performance will be impacted there. So that will do it for this one. Let me know what you guys thought about those big Zotac GPUs. How do you guys feel about the 4090 coming out first before the rest of the models? And also, NVIDIA releasing two different 4080 models. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.